Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And today is Friday. Uh, we've made it to the weekend just about. Uh, and of course, I thought today, uh, like we did yesterday when we talked about St. Monica, let's talk about her son, St. Augustine. Remember, we talked yesterday about how St. Monica uh, was the one who um, prayed St. Augustine into the faith. And uh, and and we read to, uh, yesterday at Mass uh, about her, about her uh, prayer and her intention, uh, and then her dying in Ostia in Rome, uh, rather than making all the way back to uh, Africa, uh, where they were both from. Uh, and uh, ultimately then her remains were moved. Uh, but um, let's talk about St. Augustine, perhaps one of the greatest of the theologians in the church. Uh, St. Augustine was a heretic in the beginning. Uh, it sounds funny to say that, uh, but he actually started out uh, as a young man and as a young adult uh, following a false doctrine called the Manichees, which is known as a Gnostic sect. That somehow there was a, a secret knowledge about God uh, that could only be attained through the as ascertaining of wisdom and taking classes and reaching levels of attainment. And there's all sorts of uh, heretical groups out there that go by different names now. Uh, we've got a, a cult uh, right down the street, uh, a couple of churches down, uh, called the Temple of I Am. And they have this where you, if you take all their classes, you'll reach a level of, of knowledge and enlightenment and you'll learn the truth about, about God. And you know, there's nothing secret about God. There's no secrets. It's all in the scriptures and God the Holy Spirit is more than happy to reveal them to you at no cost because that's the trick with most of these groups is that you need to obtain those levels and, and it costs you money. Uh, you know, Scientologists are the same way too. This, they're silly. They don't even have a God but, but they have this kind of thing that you go to the bridge to some sort of enlightenment and that's a whole other story altogether. So St. Augustine's got a bunch of, he's a prolific writer. Uh, he had an amazing um, conversion experience. He was what was called a rhetorician. Uh, in other words, he was involved, well, we probably crossed between a public speaker and a lawyer. Uh, and he decided uh, to move to Milan in Italy because that was where the greatest schools of re rhetoric were, uh, but also, and to teach, but also because there was a great rhetorician there named St. Ambrose. And he wanted to go and f listen to St. Ambrose so he could take notes about how St. Ambrose uh, taught. Uh, he didn't want to learn from St. Andrews necessarily, other than his methods. Um, but God the Holy Spirit worked on St. Augustine. Monica was praying for him. And sure enough, uh, St. Saint, uh, Augustine was primed and ready because he was, had enough questions about the silliness of the Manichees uh, that when St. Ambrose presented the pure doctrine of Jesus Christ and his church, St. Ambrose was came to faith, um, or St. Uh, Augustine came to faith. And so we have several things that one is uh, his big tome, which is the City of God, uh, which was written after the fall of Rome. Uh, and this is, as you see, is quite the tome. I do recommend it to you if you like a lot of heavy duty reading, but I'm going to recommend some light reading to you. And that is St. Augustine's Confessions. Uh, this is the story about his conversion experience. Uh, and it's really quite fantastic. Um, it, it's an autobiography. And he talks very frankly about his sinfulness, uh, what he was like growing up, uh, and even his parents is failing until they came to the fullness of the faith. Um, which they did before he did. Um, his father died as a Christian, but, but at the end of his life, Monica became a more and more devout Christian as her time went on. Uh, and then her prayer and pleading was for the conversion of her son, St. Augustine. Uh, and, the, and then so finally, when Ambrose had been working on him, God the Holy Spirit had been working on him, Monica had been praying for him, he finally had his conversion experience uh, where he literally heard children singing a song, uh, but there were none around, uh, pick it up and read, pick it up and read, pick it up and read. And for the first time, he had opened the scriptures plenty of time, but the first time he opened them with an open heart and he heard God speaking to him through those scriptures and he had his conversion experience. So this is the confession, not like a confession like to a priest you know, telling your sins. Uh, he does describe his sins, but it's his confession of faith. In other words, his public confession that he is a follower of Jesus Christ and how that came about. And I recommend this to you. This is not a long book. Uh, in the P Penguin book, it's a 300 pager, but it's, it's an easy read. And I do recommend this to you. So today's Friday, no public worship here at St. John's, but of course, we're saying our prayers, we're praying for each other and getting ready to worship on Sunday in church. And may God give you a day that is full of blessings.